What is going on, everybody? This is J4Y from the Dota On Demand Dota Talk stream. How's everyone doing today? Uh, we're going to bring you here a match from the qualifiers for the Gosu League Division 2. Uh, we have Dota Talk on the Radiant, and they're going up against Dooza, and that's going to be on the Dire. Um, so, you know, actually, it really should be exciting competitive match here for this uh, for this division. Uh, you know, I think these P teams here are pretty evenly skilled, so we're going to have to see... Uh, you know how they decide to run things, what they're comfortable with this uh, this time around. You know, obviously, there's a little more on the line than my last scrimcast. This is actually, uh, you know, something a little more on the professional side. So, uh, you know, expect to see. I think the normal picks, normal bands, or what I say by that, I mean, you know, of course, uh, it should be all normal. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he does. Like, I'm sure he does. So, anyways, we're jumping right into the bands. And we have here a Darkseer coming out right away for Dota Talk, who are first ban, first pick. Um, and then right away, a Lycanthrope <laughs> counter ban that. Now, this is looking pretty much identical um, to what happened in the last game I, I uh, casted. You know, Darkseer, just pretty much a first or second ban every almost every game. You know, teams just don't want to have to deal with it. Lycanthrope, similar thing. Uh, one of these hard carries, who just does immense amount of damage. You know, able to push lanes as well, and with the Howl, you know, adds bonus damage to all of his teammates, um, as well as some minions, so you know, it's all around, just can add a ton of damage to take down those towers and push for the win. Um, so definitely not surprising there. And we got a Broodmother, uh, another band here, as well as Nature's Prophet. Uh, I did actually get the privilege to see them run that Nature's Prophet, uh, Dota Talk that is, and they sure did destroy with it, you know, having so much pushing power coming out of those trees and the, uh, being able to teleport all around the map just proved to be super effective, honestly. And so, you know, not a big surprise. Chaos Knight now, a third band uh, coming out for Dota Talk. And he's been, like I said, new to the scene, but for Dota 1 players, which most of these are, you know, he's been around for a long time. And players are just very aware of how, you know, how effective he can be in that game. Just an immense strength hero who can do tons and tons of damage, uh, both consistent and burst. Uh, has a really reliable 2-4 to four second stun when he gets that ranked up. And then the, the gap closer with the Chaos Rift. Um, you know, just all around amazing. The pushing potential to him with the ultimate, no brainer here. And then Invoker being the final ban for Dooza. So, Invoker, uh, one of those also very excellent heroes that, you know, is able to accomplish a lot. Has so many different spells he can invoke. Uh, recently, the Exort Quas build has been proven to be really useful and effective. People getting that Sunstrike, you know, right away has been map presence all over the place. So, you know, once again, not a surprising ban. And Brewmaster first pick. And right away, Queen of Pain picked by Dooza. So, Brewmaster, uh, you know, another amazing hero that's come in sort of recently to the scene, but he's been around now for a little bit while. Uh, another great hero, honestly. Uh, it has a really great AoE slow presence, you know, can slow both attack and movement speed with that Thunderclap. Uh, can give missed chance to enemies when he throws his keg. Uh, it just all around a great hero. Uh, his ultimate, though, is really the prize for that. He's able to split into three different little pandas. It just cause a ton of mayhem. Uh, just immense amount of damage. He has a stun, a cyclone. You know, you don't want to mess with him in that. So, a really good first pick. But then the Queen of Pain and Shadow Demon, also very useful as well. Uh, the Queen of Pain, of course, for that AoE presence in the team fights. You know, as well as that jumping around with Blink can get really good rune control. You know, able to just do tons of damage to the Scream of Pain and then dropping that ult in the team fight. Oof. You don't want to think about how much damage I can do. Uh, Leshrac now picked up, actually, for the Radiant team. Uh, very, very common as well, honestly. With the Diabolic Edict, uh, if he's not running support, if he's run more of that, like, carry or semi-carry role, you know, another one of these heroes that pretends to be so useful for pushing. Uh, because if he can get all those Diabolic Edict uh, charges to hit on a tower, it's going to drop incredibly fast. So, you know, teams are going to have to figure out ways to kind of try to deal against that, you know, try to slow him down, because if he gets some items, especially like a Bloodstone or a BKB really quick, he's going to be near impossible to take down and just doing, you know, dishing out tons and tons of AoE damage. But the Shadow Demon pickup as a support, I really do like it. And he is run generally as that support pickup, um, you know, just able to keep someone out of the fight like the Panda, if he can just, you know, cause that dispersion on him to keep him out of it for at least a little bit. 
Uh, then purge him to slow him. You know, he's got different moves that should be really effective against him. Uh, Nygma now picked up. This I know Dota Top loves to, uh, to, loves to run him, especially at Angel. He was running him in the last game I was able to cast. Um, really great for CC, you know, as in, as a general rule. Of course, he's got the Malphite for the periodic stun. He's got the Black Hole for a really good CC, really good ultimate there. Uh, really helps for the team fight. If he can stack that up with the Panda and the uh, Leshrac already, uh, that alone is a lot of AoE damage. So, you know, I would definitely, definitely be excited to see if they can make that work this game. So it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Duzo decides to try to run against this kind of lineup. Now, when you see a name they picked up this kind of early, uh, you've got a lot of options to stop that, regardless if he goes BKB or not. Um, you can go with the Beastmaster, for example. Uh, that you know, it's a great. He has a great ultimate that goes through magic community that will interrupt that black hole, uh, as well as Ventral Spear with that swap. A really good support for that case, and that could work well with Shadow Demon as well. But they're actually going to go Windrunner, which is also uh, not a bad choice in herself. I mean, uh, she's got really great CC with that Shackle Shot. And, uh, you know, the, the, good, the good ability to clear creep waves with the power shot is also very important when you're thinking about lining up team fights. Because if you throw a power shot plus a scream of pain uh, from Quap, it's going to pretty much right there, then and there, clear the creep wave. So, you know, really good for, I guess, anti-push is the way I'm going to say it here. Uh, and when you have an Ingman on their team, you know, <laughs> an Ingman Leshrac, you know they're thinking about going kind of an early to mid pushing game. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're kind of being intelligent in that fact that they're like, okay, we got to try to counter that out a little bit, and this is a good way to do it. Uh, so now Tidehunter being banned out. Interesting there. Um, maybe this team is going to actually run Windrunner not support, which would make a lot of sense. Um, you do see her in the side solo very often, but they also have Quap that could do that too. So, you know, maybe they still do want to support uh, for like a tri lane and then just keep the Windrunner now in that side solo for bottom. So we have to see how they work with that. Vino banned out, actually, by Duza here. So, like I was saying here, the Radiant, they do not even seem to have to support. Now, Leshrac could support, but he likes to also be run as that kind of semi-carry to get the farm up. So, you know, wouldn't be surprised to see them pick up some uh, some supports in these future things. And quick bans here. Anti-Mage and Morphling now banned out. Anti-Mage, no surprise, really, you know, very effective, as well as the Morphling, but Sand King picked up almost immediately, not even trying to get into their bonus time here, um, and, you know, gets a really nice uh, initiation, that's a really great initiation hero, uh, you know, throw in that nice Burrow Strike to hit multiple heroes, you know, dropping that Epicenter to do tons and tons of AoE damage, they really like to run Enigma with someone that also has huge AoE, you know, burst potential. So, hopefully, you know, that kind of thing. They might be able to line up something like that. Uh, you know, he'll probably end up supporting... Uh, well, the lanes are interesting right now. If the Enigma goes in the jungle like I would expect him to, that means it's going to be uh, probably a solo on the on the top lane. Maybe a solo... Uh, I don't know. I don't really like any of the heroes. It could be the Shrac. Uh, I'm not sure. I think Brewmaster would run the middle... And then maybe Sand King with this other hero will be bottom, but it's gonna have to, we're gonna have to wait and see who their fifth and final pick is before it can kind of make any clear bets on that. Uh, now they're eating the bonus time of the dire here, still waiting on the fourth pick here. Not sure what they want to go. Um, you know, they still obviously are probably gonna nice plan for like a carry, a semi carry, and there's a, there's a semi carry with the Night Stalker. Uh, you know, very, very awesome selection there. Uh, you know, especially during that knife of course, he's got an immense slow that does a big burst amount of damage, uh, and then a super long silence with the nightmare. I mean, it's just, it's incredibly hard for teams to deal with, especially if you can get that off on a Lashrak, on an Enigma, even on the Sand King, uh, you know, or any of these heroes. You know, if he gets that off before they're able to start doing their combinations and their spells, uh, it's going to bring them down immensely. It also gives that miss chance. So if he gets that on the Brewmaster kind of early in the fight, that's going to be incredibly useful for the rest of that, how that fight's going to go. It's going to determine a lot of things. So I can't, I'd really do like that pickup. Um, but now we're going to have to wait to see who this fifth and final pick is. I'm not exactly sure what they're planning on doing here. But as far as the Dire goes, uh, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of thinking here that the Queen of Pain is still going to take the middle with the the Windrunner bottom, and then we're going to have Night Stalker, Shadow Demon, and then either a Roamer or another support coming as their fifth pick. But I'm still I'm still clueless about what Dodacock's doing here. They have a bunch of different options, and they're definitely eating into their bonus time now for their last pick because they just want to make sure 
that it's going to be effective against a hero like Night Stalker as well as the rest of that lineup. You know, they have to be wary of that. So, you know, definitely going to be interesting here. 20 seconds left here on the bonus time, and Beastmaster is the fifth and final pick. Interesting. So they're going for just a heavy CC team here. They've got both Enigma and the Beastmaster on the same team. I mean, that's just going to lock heroes down so amazingly. Especially when you got heroes like Quop and Night Stalker. Uh, you know, those two heroes, if they can get locked down, because they're so fast, so mobile during their peak times, you know, if, they, if we can get a good Beastmaster all right away, then he, they might have enough burst damage just to finish him there before he can escape. So I, I, I actually am pretty, I'm pretty liking that pickup right now. You know, it's really interesting. But now we got only 23 seconds left for the bonus time for Duza. So they don't have a lot of time to think about this pick. And they're going with Chen. I haven't even heard or seen this hero in a while. Where did he just fell off the face of the earth? But amazing pick, nonetheless. Uh, very, very good hero. Um, you know, of course now he's gonna be thrown in the jungle. So that's gonna kind of, that's not gonna really throw him off my predictions too much here. I, I still believe that that's going to be. How it works out. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have here a pause. Okay, this is looking very familiar to <laughs> the last time I was uh, doing a cast. They had a pause right away, but no surprises here. Um, so yeah, it looks like actually the diary here might be just running down and uh, just trying to decide if they want to try to maybe gank their woods. They have a smoke really early on the Chen, particularly. So, you know, hopefully the, they may, might be able to catch someone off or something. You see a little bit of drawing here from the brown player. So that's where they're going to look for someone just going to hide right around that nook. And that could be really useful if they find someone. Uh, and Dota Tog, I don't know if they're going to have it in them for the level 1 fight. I mean, okay, they got the Splitter level 1. They got the, the Thunderclap. Very useful, of course. You're going to assume the Burrow Strike from Sand King is going to happen. The pause is going to be undone. That's great. Beastmaster going boots? Huh, boots going uh, level 1. Okay, I haven't seen that happen in a while. Usually you see here players get uh, some kind of regeneration. I mean, he has the tangos, but, you know, he's going to be getting harassed down constantly. And Bottle, I guess he might be running in the middle to get Bottle, and maybe Brewmaster is actually going to stay on the bottom. That seems actually a lot more likely now. So maybe Brewmaster and Sand King on the bottom here. Uh, Lashrak taking the, the top solo. And then the Enigma in the jungle. I mean, that's that could be a, definitely a reasonable case for them. Lashrak could also take the middle though as well. Uh, interesting either way. Oh, we're definitely going to maybe see some conflict here. Oh, they're ringing around the rosy though. <laughs> here comes all five bottom and all five top. They just completely miss each other. No words down yet, so they're not sure <laughs> what is even going on. Well, that's pretty hysterical. They do place a good well, ward there. Oh, and here we go. Initiation's going to happen. Lashrak going to get slowed down. Brewmaster now getting caught. The dispersion is used. Burst Strike hitting two heroes. Pretty good start. Tons of AoE damage goes down. Queen of Pain instantly dies. And now they're going to try to chase down this Shadow Demon. Possibly. No, they're not. Enigma is going to try to keep this Night Stalker down. Are they going to have it? Malphite's up in one second. Going to use it here. Just one second stun. Can the Split Earth land as well? No, it cannot. And that is going to whiff. But Shadow Demon's going to definitely get caught out. Out here oh boy he is in a heap of trouble he's gonna try to juke about as much as he can with these things but is that gonna be enough not even possible dispersion comes down but that's gonna be one two last hits and that is gonna be two for nothing Dota talk gets the advantage really great burrow strike opening up i loved it uh so really huge start them for there and brewmaster is actually staying in that middle as i originally predicted against that queen of pain but he's actually already up 1-0, to zero, has 450 gold in addition to all these items, so he's got a huge advantage. You know, I'm going to have to see what they can do with that. Sand King actually, okay, I was going to say Sand King's bottom, it actually looks like they want him to get the farm, and Lushrak's going to support him, uh, leaving Beastmaster to be the throwaway lane, which, you know, happens very often, of course, with the Beastmaster. He just sits back, it's farmed the wild axes, and, you know, just has a good time of it. So we're going to have to see how he does. The Night Stalker's going to get free farm, though. Which is going to cause some problem. Actually, Enigma has been sticking around the lane, and you know that makes a lot of sense because he got Malphite level one. So normally for him to jungle, he obviously needs a point in divine conversion. Uh, but now, okay, he has level two. He could go into the jungle now. So, but he he would just not have been able to without those conversions. You know, he doesn't have enough damage by himself to do nearly as much. So smart choice there to get that level two. Uh, meanwhile, Brewmaster is just going to try to get some regen going. Did some good harassment back and forth with the Queen of Pain. 
she doesn't have her healing salve, because I think she used it prior, and now Brewmaster's using his and a tango, so it's going to be plenty of health on him. Meanwhile, Enigma now going to try to do some damage down here to start his farming cycle. You know, he's got to kind of keep up. He does have some good gold. I believe he got an assist. Yes, he did. So while he doesn't have much creeps yet, he at least had some starting gold from that. All around a good start here, like I said, for the Radiant team for Dota Talk. Um, so here we go with the Leshrac and Sand King. Like I said, Sand King's actually getting the farm here as not Leshrac, so he's going just a pure support uh, for the Diabolic Edict and Split Earth. So definitely they're going to be looking to push. Uh, definitely going to be looking to push early, I would think, with the Beastmaster, Enigma, Leshrac. Uh, just tons of pushing potential there. Bottle, quick bottle on Brewmaster in addition to a Magic Stick. And you know Queen of Pain is going to be casting off a lot of spells. So, you know, definitely hands down is going to make some sense. Um... Meanwhile, it looks like Shadow Demon's just doing his job here with his dispersion. He's ready, or I'm sorry, I can call it dispersion. It's disruption. My apologies to the stream. But yeah, I mean, he's ready to uh, just get that off in the meantime. And, you know, there's not much Beastmaster can do about it. You see him actually just kind of falling back here at this point. He does have a point in the Call of the Wild, but it's only getting him a bird at level 1. So, oh, this is what he's going to do. He's going to try to stack these up. I love, 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 love this ward placement right here. That's going to allow him not to stack these creeps. They knew the Beastmaster was going to be in the throwaway lane, trying to stack these up. And, oh, he doesn't even get them in the first place. But even if uh, even if this was still a possible gank, you know, it's not going to respawn. Because that ward is there, and they're going to realize that and have to counter that pretty immediately for him to be any kind of effective in this game. Meanwhile, Windrunner, uh-oh, in the heap of trouble here. Invis, don't know about the Invis uh, Panda, but she is playing very defensively. Oh, really good thunderclap. Can they land the stun? No, they do not have the follow-up stun. That's unfortunate. I uh, wasn't able to kind of complete that, if you will. And he's going to look now, probably to sell one of these branches. Yes, get a TP scroll. Or boots. He's actually going to get boots. And he's probably just going to run back middle. So, uh, you know, just leave that Queen of Pain to get a decent amount of farm. Uh, not a bad choice here. Chen, in the meantime, uh, has one point in the Holy Persuasion. Two in the Penance, actually. You normally see Test of Faith coming out. For the Chen players to get kind of that nuke as well, you know, just add that damage. But, you know, Pendence is really amazing for ganking. And especially when you're here against a hero like Beastmaster who has no real good uh, kind of escape. You know, it definitely makes a ton of sense. They're going to be able to get that with Shadow Demon and just slow him down and kill him with little trouble. Uh, Soul Catcher, you'd have to think being the max out there would be really easy to take a hero out with that move. Uh, meanwhile, let's uh, check out the farm a little bit. We've got 26 on Sand King. That's a very high amount, but actually the rest of the, the Creep Guard looks a little bit in the advantage of Dooza. But since that start, it's about 750 gold advantage for the Radiant just because of those two kill advantage. So they're, they're getting a little out farm, but they still have that beginning gold advantage, and they're going to try to keep working with that for now. And like I said, with their team lockup, they're going to probably keep trying to put pressure on lanes and eventually just try to push really quickly. So we'll have to see how they manage to play that one out. Windrunner in the meantime, you know, having a nice one-on-one. -on -one. Shackle does land. Power shot's going to go, and that's going to be a kill onto Leshrac. Very good kill for them, and he's going to just windrun out and be safe. So two versus one, he does get the kill. Very good job here. Actually, here's the pressure coming from Dusa. There's three heroes here with the Chen. Going to easily put a lot of pressure on this tower. Do they have what it takes to take it out, though? This bird minion's almost done. And they're going to have to use protection here to try to slow it down. Here comes the support of the team. Enigma is coming through the jungle with the Beastmaster. Here comes the stun of the Malphite. It's going to land, but he is a very tanky person. And Disruption is going to make sure he survives for at least for now. But a great Burrow Strike is going to definitely spell out the death for him. But not before... Oh, he almost takes out Beastmaster, doing a ton of damage. But he does fall in the meantime. And now the Panda is going to try to use a stun. And there it is. Queen of Pain going to get dropped instantly. Two kills. They don't get the kill, but they split the gold either way. Really good job getting those stun combinations off on Queen of Pain. That is one of the only ways you can actually finish her off uh, when she has that blink ability. So now they're going to look with a four hero advantage here. All these Eidolons, they're going to do as much damage as possible to this tower. And Chen only has one minion right now. And it's a uh, Furbog champion, so it's not even there's a warrior. So he's really going to have some trouble... Uh, defending without maybe like a wild can chiefing like he had before where you can really disrupt the other team. Look at all this damage coming out. Already half health, you know, doing a lot of damage to Shrek, getting some wards over here, and they're going to look to finish this off. Initiation comes down, good thunderclap. Beastmaster's incredibly hurt, but here comes a stun, and that is going to be the death of Shadow Doom before you can even blink. 
And that was a really good... They're, they are, you know, combining off these stuns amazingly well. Just really one after the other, just making it so the team can't even react. And that's what's really impressive about it. And Windrunner was like, I didn't want anything to do with that, honestly. She had nothing to want to do with that. She's instead just going to keep continue farming, keeping the lane kind of static, you know. And actually, they're going to a stun here. Good Malphite's going to lead up to a stun. And there's the, the third and final. Is it going to be enough? The Windrunner's going to be used, and they're not going to have enough auto attack damage. It's going to be her just barely escaping. So good job on her waiting to use that until all the stuns are used. So she knew they had nothing left in the arsenal after that. Strong play indeed. Let's try begging for some boots. You know, they did get the the, the uh, tower down, but he was only he spent that money on the Observer Ward, the, the, the nice support that he is. So kind of holding on there. Brewmaster finishes his Magic Wand, so now maybe looking to go for something like some treads or some uh, phase boots. You know, just getting that next kind of boot would help out immensely. They have a pair of Arcane already on the team. So I don't think they need that second one. They probably want to go a mech and enigma. Once again, like Angel, he loves to do this on there. If they're going with this kind of push lineup, he goes for a really quick mech instead of a blink. You know, it can definitely go either way, but I, I definitely do like to see that on the enigma. Uh, and they're going to keep the pressure up, keep pressure up. But Sand King, oof, taking a ton of damage to that power shot. Uh, down to 340 health, and I, he does have the Hedris regen, but I don't think it's going to be enough to keep him in the lane against another power shot. Master now looking, trying to use that Thunderclap, maybe do some harass, but it's really hard to harass a ranged Queen of Pain here, who has Scream of Pain as well. She might even be able to burst him down if she plays her cards right. Uses the slow. Not aware that Brewmaster's here, but here he goes. She's going to try to maybe use the ult. No, she gets a blink, but doesn't do nearly as much as she wanted to. And in the meantime, the Dyer's Tower falls, and that is going to be yet another push, but also the uh, Radiant Top Tower falls, and Brewmaster's, oh boy, runs into a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Oh, look how much instant damage he takes. <laughs> he throws off a wild axis, but not enough. In the meantime, they're just pushing. They're continuing the push here. They knew the Brewmaster was not going to be able to do anything, and they're just going to keep trying to apply the pressure. But that's not going to work out for them, because look at their tower. Getting heaps and heaps of damage with that Chen, the minions, just everything doing tons of damage. Are they going to TP support this? Yes, they are. Here we go. A TP really on the front line. Alt comes out, and he's going to look to open up on this Chen. No, he actually wants to open up on the Dark Troll Warlord. And it is going to fall... Yeah, Burrow Strike finishes it! Alright, gets the kill. So, a Panda ult for uh, a Warlord, maybe not the best of trades and spells and abilities, but at the end of the day, they kept them off their tower. It's at half health, you know, so pretty even damage trade, I guess, in that res in that regard. So, Nice Stalker now has 1,800 gold with the treads. He is actually on top of the world. He doesn't even have that much. He's just gotten a ton of farm as well as these tower kills really helped out. And meanwhile, action here, Shadow Demon going to fall to the Brewmaster. That poor sap, he's down to three deaths as it is. And, they're, you know, they're just he's got nowhere to go. He tries to put out these wards, and while he does successfully, you know, it's not going to help him very much. Bottle uh, given very nicely over to his teammate. They're going to look to push this Tier 1 tower now in middle. Uh, and now the Buckler's finished up, going to Enigma. So now they almost have the mech completed. Really nice by them, and they're definitely going to want to pipe against this team. Tons of magic damage they're going to have to deal with. So we're going to have to see uh, who's going to go for that. I would think maybe the Sand King after he gets his blink, but I'm not sure. Tons of damage. Look how much that Diabolic Edict is doing. That is just an insane amount of damage. The Shackle does not latch, but they do a whole ton of damage. They do 1,000 damage to the tower. It's only got 300 life left. They see the Night Stalker. He is spotted. And now he's going to look to go on this Beastmaster, but he doesn't have his ult yet, so they can't initiate. And meanwhile, the power shot comes out. Going to do a whole ton of damage to the Beastmaster. He's going to drop instantly to the Scream of Pain. Really good job by Quap there. Shackle does not land again. Brewmaster now looking to kind of fall back here. Nice Talker gets the kill on the Shrek. Chen pops the heal, making sure no one else falls. Here comes the Sand King. Sand King is trying to do as much damage as he can, but they have the heal to counter out his ultimate, more or less. And they're just not going to be able to stop this push. Queen of Pain comes in. Another great job. Ultimate going to get a kill on Sand King. Brewmaster going to try to do it, but a beautiful Shackle Shot catching two heroes. Wild Axes come out. They're going to try to chase down this Soul Catcher Brewmaster. He doesn't have his ultimate. He uses the Magic Wand, but he is still going to fall. That's going to be another death. Triple kill for the Queen of Pain, and they're going to get the tower. What a huge turnaround for this Dooza team, and they are just doing playing so well together here.
So before that fight even started, it was around even. I don't even want to see how much that shifts. I'm going to say at least a few thousand. It's a beautiful job there all around. I mean, the Chen ult pretty much countered out the Sand King ult. He did a good job. He hit about three or four heroes with it. But the Chen ult was just so effective. I mean, it heals at rank one for 200. So, I mean, you know, it's giving them almost a third of their life back. Uh, and that's really helpful when you're trying to obviously fight in the team capacity. Now they're looking to come back middle, and they're going to just want to keep up the pressure. I mean, that's kind of what their strategy is built around, they're the cornerstone. They don't have that late carry. You know, they have Sand King, and they have uh, Beastmaster. So their late game with Panda is, is not terrible, but it's definitely nothing like uh, Night Stalker. I think Night Stalker is just going to tear him apart otherwise, especially with how much gold he's got. He's got a Vanguard now and an Urn. So 1,500 health on a Night Stalker. It is, in fact, nighttime as well. So he is just going to be scary. This is like the worst time of day for them to come out. And good job using, uh, you know, people might not be aware of that, but that Shadow Poison does, in fact, give vision of the area. So he's sweeping the area with that to get wards found. And, you know, there's a good job there identifying where it is and taking it out. And that's exactly what they need to do with the Night Stalker, especially at nighttime. You know, get as much vision as possible and counter out their vision. So that way you're able to, you know, effectively uh, just have full control of the map and not have to worry about anything, you know. And they actually place this uh, counter ward. Oh, it's just an observer, and this is a sentry. So actually, they are able to see what they need to see, but look how much damage. <laughs> There's so many of these big minions, and they need to... Oh, no. Oh, no, what is this beast Beastmaster doing? He was going to try to counter ward, but now he's in trouble. He's going to be on the run. Queen of Pain comes out. They're going to look to maybe take these out as a team. That's a big team effort, though. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of minions. Yeah, they don't want to mess with that. They know it's there. They have the ward still. So they'll see when they try to counter that out. But they... Okay, a lot of pings coming to Roshan now. A lot of pings. And the Dyer's got... They've got this. It's, it's, uh, it is daytime, but they have a Queen of Pain with double damage. They have a whole ton of these Chen creeps. And they could, I think they have enough damage to really take this guy out. And they don't have vision. The, you know, Dotalk does not have any vision of this. So they're pretty unaware. All they've done so far is uh, kill that ward successfully. But in the meantime, Roshan just taking a whole ton of damage. He's already down to uh, about two-thirds health. And the Radiant Team not even reacting in the slightest. Not having an idea what goes on. And yeah, this is going to definitely be the death of Roshan. I wonder who the Aegis is going to go to. You would think Night Stalker here, uh, since it's going to be on the front lines. We'll have to see how they play this. Yes, he falls. Night Stalker does pick up the Aegis. <laughs> the team Dota talk is like, oh boy. Didn't even think about that. And sure enough, they get the kill. And now they've just got to be back on their heels. And the vision's going to keep coming out for them. You know, the only ward they have, really, is right here. And that's not anywhere in this half of the map. You know, that that's going to be the most important thing, especially with Enigma, who likes to farm the jungle. He's not going to feel safe until for a very long time until they can get some wards back up. You know, so Dyer doing just a great job applying the pressure over and over again. Uh, very useful indeed. So I haven't looked at items in a while. Uh, Queen of Pain looks like the point booster. Probably going to go for that Agmon Scepter. Very typical. Chad did finish the mech. So really a great pickup for him as well. Windrunner uh, has a cloak, could go for a pipe potentially, but that could just be a cloak as well, so not sure. Actually, here we go, middle does get pushed down. They kind of caught him off guard, and there wasn't much health left. That ball Eek made sure of that, uh, able to easily finish that off. They're trying to keep them down now, but like I said, the Queen of Pain plus Windrunner is an immense amount of uh, wave clearing. You know, they have so much of it just with two heroes alone. So, you know, not really too worried about this push. They're able to counter it out pretty easily. So we're to see uh, how they line up. They're still sticking around, though. They got all five heroes lined up here. They do not have Night Stalker. That could play a huge factor. Power Shot going to give that vision, and there is the Shadow Poison as well, giving some guaranteed vision up that hill. Um, and it did not land, but they still knew it was coming. Here comes the Queen of Pain. Image just having a one-on-one -on -one with this boar. Looks like it's not going to go in the favor of the boar. This image is just too strong. And they're going to leave it be. Wow, so an image gets some free gold. Alright, anyways, <laughs> back to some real action. Uh, they just all naturally shift over here to the tier 2. Moving around a lot. Look how much damage Dybalt is doing. They're going to use protection. And they need to fall back immediately. Because here comes the whole wave of people. 
beautiful shackle shot gonna land. Beastmaster is gonna fall before he even gets his ulti off. Possibly no. Mech gets him off. Queen of Pain off is gonna hit three heroes. A big ball hits all five heroes. Sand King dropping the ultimate. Tons of damage, but here comes the two heals. The Mech and the Chen all gonna be beautiful to keep four of them back up. Sand King's gonna fall now. Is the pan damage gonna be enough against the Windrunner? And no, she gets disrupted, and Lushrak is going to fall as well. Uh, and now Panda is in a lot of trouble. Going to get caught out by the slow. Uses that to try to do as much as he can, but he is going to fall as well. Three heroes down. Wow, they had such an amazing initiation. Enigma hit all five heroes with the Sand King ult. You can't ask for much better than that. And yet it just wasn't enough damage. Chem with both a mech and his ultimate, able to heal his team back to pretty much full, except for the one hero who fell. I mean, that was just beautiful on both teams' fights, really. They're doing just a great job. So, all around, wonderful job, both teams. But, oh, the Tire comes out on top, keeps their tower, gets all those kills. You know, just really coming on top. This gold graph now dipping under 2,000. And that's just going to go lower after after we see those kills uh, add on there. So, you know, they're trying to keep the pressure up because that's what their team, like I said, is based on. They don't have an amazing late game. Panda is not bad by any means, and he went blink, so he still lacks the damage. You know, now he's just got more initiation, but I didn't think initiation was so much their issue. They have a blink on the Sand King and the Enigma ult to follow it up. You saw how amazing that was, but they just didn't have the damage. They didn't have enough damage to kill him, and I think another part of that is how Sand King is not even level 11, or close. He's level 8. You know, he needs those levels dramatically. If he's the same level as his support, you know, he's not getting enough experience. It's just that, you know. And like I say, on the other uh, side of that argument, level 12 Night Stalker, almost 13, you know, and now he's got the ages, he's got 2,800 gold, so far ahead, Queen of Pain, wow, I think what good play there, destroys the double damage room before it even gets bottled, you know, really smart choice there, so she can't have another rune charge as well, that double damage rune, but the Queen of Pain also, uh, that ultimate to start off, hit three or four heroes, I mean, it was just another beautiful job by them. Uh, everyone seems to be landing their spell incredibly effectively, but the Dire just seems to have a lot more damage and heal potential in those fights, which is really allowing them to come out on top. What they would give for an ancient apparition ult on top of their team. A smoke now comes out. Is this going to be effective, though? You know, they're kind of lurking around here in the middle, seeing if they can catch anyone. They have two Blink Daggers. Nice Stalker is there, but he's got the Aegis, so that might not be the best initiation choice. And the whole team is coming around. They can now see that the Queen of Pain is lurking around. And they just aren't going to be able to do anything with this smoke, I don't think. They're going to actually be pressured in by the Dire here. So they're going to have to fall back. Uh, Brown's kind of just showing off. They, they got the two Tier Towers they want to kill. They got this Tier 1 that's still half health. This could be a quick, quick drop for them. You know, if one here, just Night Stalker went down there, it would be easily, easily finished off. But they actually do a smoke of their own. So willing to try to catch someone off guard as well, hopefully hoping that like uh, maybe a Beastmaster will get caught out or something. Here comes the Greater Hawk, gonna get attacked by the Windrunner, so now they know they're gonna fall back instantly. Sand King needs to get out of there before he gets caught. Check his Amalfeist. They're gonna go on this Lashrak. He is going to drop. Not yet, he's still alive. Meanwhile, we have another black hole hitting two heroes. That's going to be an instant kill. Chen dies before he gets his ult off. That's going to be very useful. Shackle shot two heroes. A really good job. But this is getting turned around immensely on them. Windrunner is in a heap of trouble. Going to get killed here. And now they're going to look to maybe chase down this Queen of Pain or the Night Stalker. It is nighttime, though. He did use his ultimate. He's going to get out of there just fine. But they still do three for one trade. Lashrak, the support, only one to fall. That is exactly, exactly the fight they needed there. Really good catch out. If they can catch Chen off before he uses that ultimate in every fight, uh, that's going to be very important to them winning those team fights, I think. Because we saw in the last fight, when they got everything off, Chen just healed everything back. But in this case, he couldn't throw anything off. And it really, really, really had a great thing to do with how they won that fight. Another great ultimate, by the way, from Angel. Catching three heroes that time. I mean, it's just over and over again, you know, we see these beautiful initiations here. And the two Blink Daggers helps. I mean, I do admit that, especially with the Broodmaster having that Blink as well. You know, is able to really come out on top there, the Sand King Burrow Strike. Um, so, you know, they're really taking advantage of having those in this early part of the game. But they gotta keep the pressure up with their team. Now, Panda and Night Stalker facing off. If Panda can get his, uh, uh, his mischance off, which he doesn't have any points in Drunken Haze yet, but he's only level 9 as well. So he wouldn't even afford a point yet. But if he can get that off on Night Stalker before he starts going crazy on them, 
Uh, that would be really useful. But then again, Night Stalker is going Black King Bar, which of course makes a lot of sense. But they do have two ultimates, both a Beastmaster and Enigma, that go through Magic Community. So, you know, if he gets caught by either of those, even if he has Black King Bar, he's still going to get CC'd until either Enigma gets interrupted or just wears off from Beastmaster. So, you know, either way, uh, not sure exactly how that's going to play out. Enigma now going the Black King Bar. Uh, again, like I saw him in his last game he played, you know, just really prefers that over the Blink. And I think that's really important because, once again, this dire team does not have an answer for a Blacking Bar Enigma. You know, they don't have something going through Magic Community on their team. They just don't. They have the silence beforehand, but that's a bit. That's about it. You know, beyond that, not a whole lot going on. So we'll have to see how that plays out. If he can get that uh, relatively soon, which he's not super close yet. You know, he still needs a couple items, the Mythal Hammer and, of course, the recipe. So he's about 2,900 gold off. But and now actually 2100, <laughs> including his 800. But yeah, I mean he's still not super close, and they're gonna look to push this tower. I don't know if this is the best place to defend, especially with the track. Well, he is gonna port in, but he is so vulnerable in these fights. He's only got 750 health with just a bracer. You know, not a lot he can do about that. And we have a nice line of creeps here coming out. We got the centaur comp for the stun, the wild King war chief, and they're gonna dive right away. Here they go they're using the illusions. Brewmaster is caught out in the woods. Shackle Shot's going to initiate, but here we go, actually. Nice Stalker getting caught out. He does have Blacky Bar. He has decided not to use it because his Aegis is still up. He's going to just use that Aegis before this fight even starts. But Enigma, looking to die, actually dies right before. In the meantime, Windrunner is going to survive for now. Chen Alt is still available. It's level 2, so be looking out to use that. Blacky Bar now used. This is going horribly for the Radiant team. Chen Alt goes down. Sand King just tried to survive. He has that blink up. No, it's not. Enigma Alt catches a lot of heroes, but that's all about it can do because everyone else is gone. Here comes the sentry. That's going to be 5 for nil in the favor of Dooza. Age is the only thing used in that fight. And that is just the downfall here of Dota Talk. They're going to get not only that tier 1 tower, but this tier 2 and possibly just more. I mean, that was a beautiful, beautiful fight. Nice Talker just going in. Very, very ahead of the team. Not afraid to use his Aegis to get Enigma down as low as he did. And he has a great fight. They killed him right off the bat. And he did buy back, but it just wasn't enough. You know, his team was already down for the count by that point. Brewmaster, once again, not even getting his ulti off. I mean, just another unfortunate circumstance. They're so behind in experience now. Uh, whew. 14,000 experience advantage here for the Dire. I mean, that's enormous. Level 15. On this Night Stalker, the closest on the Radiant is 11 by the Beastmaster, so they are just falling behind the experience so much. And that makes a huge difference in these fights. It absolutely does. I mean, you know, Queen of Pain having... The people just having their level 2 alts is a huge difference in how these fights go. Uh, you know, if Brewmaster could have a level 2, you, his things would be hitting a lot harder. Beastmaster is the only one that did, but it just wasn't nearly effective because it's single target. Sand King desperately needs a level 2. And they're actually looking to try to get a little bit of initiation on Queen of Pain. Does get it, but actually she goes... Okay, she gets the point booster, but she went for a straight blacking bar. Another great idea. The more blacking bars, the better, honestly, on their team. You know, they, they kind of need that against how much magic damage is coming out from this Radiant team. So I think a really smart choice in that. Um, so meanwhile, I'm just going to go back to farming. The gold graph, now about 7,500 in the favor of the Dire, so not like, it, you know, they still have a chance to come back. It's not over. You know, they have Enigma. And any game that has Enigma in it, I think, always has a chance for a turnaround. Especially Enigma Sand King. You know, put those two together, you know, as long as there's no BKBs popped, I think they're pretty safe. But, you know, they still have a lot. They have, it's an uphill battle. There's no questioning that. And they're going to look to do Roshan again. But this time there is this ward here scouting out so they actually know about it. Here comes a greater hawk. Initiation right on the Queen of Pain. The ult goes down. Are they going to be able to kill her in time? The mech goes and the Chen ult is still up. Sand King ult trying to do as much as he can. But here comes the Queen of Pain ult. Chen ult now gets popped off. Tons of damage coming around for everybody. They're not sure who to fall. Beastmaster is going to just try to teleport out. Gets interrupted immediately. He's going to fall. And that is going to be two deaths once again for none. Queen of Pain almost fell, but didn't quite get the burst damage. Chen with the mech was able to keep her up just long enough. And now that's going to be the fall of Roshan. And that's going to be another Aegis for this Night Stalker.
and I mean, it's as if he's not farmed enough already. 3,000 gold. I don't know how the Raiden's going to have a hard time coming back in this game, unfortunately for them. It was a good initiation on Queen of Pain. I mean, they had a lot of damage coming down, but they don't have that big burst or big consistent damage. They don't have that huge damage. They have big team fight damage right now. But that really hurts them in the, the later parts of this, how this goes. You know, just because they don't have, like, uh, a hard carry to really dish out some damage. A Night Stalker at nighttime might as well be one. He just does a whole ton of damage and attacks incredibly fast. So, you know, you put those together and it's a really, really destructive uh, combination. Beastmaster gets the Necro level 2. He's going for level 3 to try to get uh, maybe some counter vision here against all these wards, but, uh, you know... It's still, that's pretty much all they've got. I mean, they don't have anything else really going in their favor. He's still, Enigma's still far off from his blacking bar. Lashrak's still just sitting on a poor bracer. Uh, Panda, you know, has two bracers now, but he still doesn't even have great boots. He doesn't have anything really useful. And I mean, they're just so far hard behind in gold at this point that the team fights, even if they get like these perfect initiations like they, they kind of did before, they don't have the damage anymore. With Chen on the other team, he can just he heals them right back to full and has no issue doing so. Pipe finished on Windrunner, so just add to the heal slash prevent damage of that team, and how much magic damage is coming out from the Dragon? I mean, let's be honest, it's a whole crap load. I mean, you got Sand King alt, you have Enigma magic damage and alt, Brewmaster with a thunderclap, and his little guys do a lot of magic damage. Beastmaster does do mixed damage, so at least there's some some saving grace there, and Lashrak's all magic damage, so throwing a pipe off with the Chen mech and the heal, I just, I don't know how they're going to break through in these fights. They're going to have to catch these heroes all together. They need another fight like that was up here, where they caught all five with the Enigma and Sand King, and just hope to God that they kill something before they get out of that Ning Ball. Pardon me for a drink there. <coughs> I'm used to having a co-caster, but he is actually out for the day, so I am just solo casting this one. And it, it does play a little thing on your throat, though. You know, you got to be careful about that. But regardless, uh, they're going to look to just get some farming. They're, you know, far helping each other farm up this lane. Beastmaster just really wants to finish that rank 3 of his Necro. And that will definitely be effective. You know, if he can get that up, they can get some true vision finally. <coughs> to finally see where all these wards are at and keep uh, keep tabs on the other team as well. Because Vision, especially at night time, <clears throat> going to be very, very useful for them. And actually, they're looking now to put another uh, push in here for the Tier 2 tower. So here comes the Dire swinging around. Are they going to use protection to keep this push at bay? No, it doesn't look like it. Not yet. Pig is actually going to TP to the Tier 3 tower. And he's going to be ready to go. His ultimate's rank 3, ready to use... 4,700 gold on a Night Stalker. I mean, that's immense. Well, four staff from Windrunner trying to initiate on the Lashrak, but it's not nearly enough. I mean, it didn't latch, and he only has 800 hits, though, so a Power Shot plus maybe a Queen of Pain, Screen of Pain is going to use a lot of that health up. It's going to do a big chunk of damage. So they're going to have to be cautious about that. Power Treads are finished up on the Brewmaster, so at least he has upgraded boots, but here we go! Initiation right on top of everyone. Brewmaster alts on top of them. Sand King alt doing tons of damage. Can they kill Chen? No, Chen lives, actually, and he's going to get all of his heals and off, as well as the pipe. Enigma now going to fall before he even uses the ultimate. That is very unfortunate. And now it's going to be two deaths. Are they going to get more? They're trying to chase down these heroes. Beastmaster is certainly going to fall. Sand King down with one hit. He is trying to TP, does successfully before the power shot even gets off, but that is, once again, three for nothing. Enigma didn't even get the ultimate off. How unfortunate is that? You know, Nice Stalker, knowing exactly who to hone in on, gets that beautiful crippling fear off right off the start and makes sure he can't silence. And he doesn't have his Black King bar yet. He, he You know, he's not even that close, so unfortunately, not able to uh, be able to pop that and get that ult off. If they could have finished up with an Enigma ult, Oh, that would have been it. That might have been their fight that they needed, but now it's just continuing the snowball in the, the favor of Duzo. Tier 2 tower falls. Now going for the tier 3. You know, they have at least one Chin minion. They're going to look to do some more. Let's see if they can push this in. The tower's already at half health. Here comes the Sand King. Uses the Sandstorm trying to survive, but Nice Soccer just on the front lines with that Aegis, and now he's got the Hyperstone. Not afraid of anything. 
And he's got what is on this courier. Oh man, finishes that assault Karyos. That's gonna be doing wonders. Here's Sand King he's going in. They're trying to initiate as much as they can. Here comes the pipe popped up. Brewmaster is taking a whole ton of damage. Nigma hitting three heroes, but the Quap finishes off the Brewmaster. Brewmaster also taking a ton of damage. And Nigma gets them, but they're not doing any follow-up damage. Sand King all is just not ready to go for that fight, and that's gonna be three more hero deaths. For none, once again, Brewmaster still hasn't even used his Aegis. Disruption going down now on the Sand King. Uses the Blink immediately, but is going to survive. But at what cost? Here comes the fall of the Barracks in mid. At 32 minutes, we're going to see both of them fall here. And they're actually just playing with maybe taking one. They could take the second one. There's two here still dead. Yes, they pop the mech, and that is going to be both Raxes dead. Sand King all does go off in the meantime, though. Shadow Demon is going to disrupt himself right for 30 health. He is going to fall now, but here comes Nice Docker. He's pissed off. He just died, did not like it. Queen of Pain gets the kill on the Shrek. He still has a BKB too. So he's like, man, whatever. I'm ready to go. And he has 900 gold on top of that assault carries. Oh, so beefy at this point in the game. And it was, it was a good initiation. I'll give him that. They didn't have too many options. But they just don't. They, the, the problem keeps lying there. They don't have the follow-up damage. They just don't with this lineup. The Necro 3 was finished up though, so at least that's kind of a little glimmer in a very dark, droll world, but we'll see if they can do anything about it. The gold now 20,000 in the favor of Dyer. A mid lane gone. They've gotten both Rashans this game. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure exactly what more they can do. The Blade Mail on um, Sand King now. These kind of cheaper items are just trying to help as much as possible. 20, oh my gosh, that's almost a 30,000 experience gold advantage. A level 18 and 17 Queen of Pain Night Stalker compared to level 13 Sand King, the highest on the Radiant. I mean, they're just so, bar so far behind. And they're, the only person that would be able to pull them out of this is the Brewmaster, who has a Blink, two Bracers, and Treads. And that's just not going to cut it. You know, that's not going to stand up to all of these items on this Night Stalker, plus extra cold on top of that. You know, maybe they're going to look to push this bomb and just maybe end this game. I mean, they have the farm, they have the experience. And are they going to have the Enigma? No, they're not going to catch him off, but they try. Uh, Rejuve bottled up for Queen of Pain. Does have her Agumon Scepter and 4300 in the bank. So she's ready to go. And uh, Windrunner with both the Pipe and Force Staff and now a Voidstone looking to go Sheepstick, I would think, next. Smart pickup. I mean, they don't have Black King bars on any of these heroes. Of course, Enigma wants his very badly, but... You know, not able to get that yet, and it's really, you know, causing them to have a hard time in these fights. Without that Black King Bar and Digma, I don't really see them having a chance unless he catches all five at the same time, and they've kind of wisened up since that one fight. You know, they spread out decently enough where they don't get caught in that point. So it's going to be incredibly difficult for them to really muster up and be able to do that kind of thing. They're just hanging around this sentry ward they placed down. I'm not sure. Oh, they're just waiting for the respawn. They've got a little ways to go, so maybe their timing's a little bit off. But maybe they're just also waiting. They're like, well, we know once we get that Aegis and a cheese, because it'll be the third death, uh, there's nothing they can do about it, because they had enough hard time as it is with just one Aegis. So, let alone get another one. And here's some good counter warding, you know, using the Necro uh, minions to scout things out. But they just placed another really quick one. And they weren't even aware of that, so they still have the vision as well. But so does, uh, you know, so does Dota Talk. They have the vision up, so they'll actually have a semi idea of when they come in, unless it's smoke. But they've already used their smoke here in the, the woods, and they're not going to catch anyone, I think. You see that? That's a beautiful arrow drawn on the mini map here. Going to show, hey, let's go up afterwards. And they're going to just try to find anyone they can. But, you know, Team Dota Talk at this point knows how behind they are. And if they really try to come and just get any kind of jungle farm or anything, there's there's their S O L to say it politely. Uh, Sand King, meantime, here comes the gank across the map. He's gonna look to probably blink here. Does blink? Here comes the Night Stalker popping his ultimate. Just he might as well. It's rank three, so it's 80 second duration, 120 second cooldown. Basically, only a 40 second in between time. Not a large deal. It's pretty much worth having up at all times. So. You know, just get, keep at nighttime for him. Keep him really strong and heavy attack speed throughout the whole game. And that's just without to worry about. They they can't do much about it. And it's a good thing they don't have a tree protector on their team, or it would never uh, see that uh, living armor do its full potential. Yeah, that was kind of random. My, my apologies. And now they're going back to Roshan. Oh, that is just 
barely just a few seconds away. It's like counting down for the uh, New Year's Eve. Five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year! And he's alive. But, uh... Oh, here they go. Oh, oh wait a second. Yes, I think that timing's perfect. And there they go. They get it in. So, they're going for Roshan. Look how quick he's falling. He's got that cheese, like I said. I would have to think Queen of Pain's going to want that delicious morsel in her inventory. Night Stalker now actually going going to get the Aegis, I'm assuming, as well. Keep what's going, you know, what don't fix what's not broken. And here we go. The Aegis picked up a Night Stalker. She's ready for Queen of Pain, and sure enough, she's going to sell her magic wand and pick up this delicious cheese. And that's going to work wonders. If she doesn't fall, like with the Chen heals, you know, she'll be able to just go straight back to full health with no trouble at all. And they're going to just put the pressure on Bob now. This could be definitely the end of the game for Dotalk unless they set up something miraculous here. Really amazing defense is what they need, but I just don't know if they have it. You know, with Brewmaster not having any items, he just picked up a drum of endurance. But that's not going to be enough to counter out what this Night Stalker is riding with. And well, we'll see. It's daytime. His ultimate's up in five seconds, so he's going to be ready to go uh, for this team fight. Pipe! preemptively used. Just gonna go straight in here. They have a few grouped up. Panda actually initiates. Blinks in. Use the ultimate. Here they go. They really want to go on this other thing. But Sand King gonna use the ult. But here comes the Chad heal to counter that damage out almost immediately. Enigma. Oh no. Again goes down without using the ultimate. Sand King now falls. Buybacks instantly. Brewmaster trying to get out with his life. Queen of Pain gonna follow him up. But here comes Sand King actually turning it around. Is she gonna be using that cheese type? She does. She pops the cheese. Going to ensure her survival, and nothing is going to push this tower. Uh, here comes the Disrupt on the Sand King. He's going to be just fine, though. Blinks out before they get anything else followed up. But Enigma, with two fights, not able to get his ulti off. is just really, really not what they needed for these fights. They needed him to be able to go in. And without that Blink Dagger or the Black King bar up, he doesn't have any way to get in there against that Night Stalker. He's just got his number. You know, he's ready to take him out. And here comes the Quick Shift. He still has the Aegis. He still has... He's got a blacking bar in five seconds. I think this might be GG's coming out here. I mean, just really well played by the Dyer. The Night Stalker knowing exactly the target he needs to go on. The Chen heals have been just immaculate. You know, making sure to keep everyone alive. They haven't lost a hero in the last three or four team fights. Uh, Let's try to do as much as he can, but he doesn't have a lot. Oh, he's going to drop instantly here. And Chen actually gets the kill. He's probably pretty proud of that using the Test of Faith. I think now once again, in a heap of trouble... He's going to survive the Beastmaster all going down on the Queen of Pain. Two more heroes dead. And that is going to be the final Rax falling. GG to Duza here against Dota Talk. Well played by Dota Talk. They had a good strategy, but it just didn't pan out the way they needed to. And now they're <laughs> Enigma going to fall. As well as Sand King, most likely, once this wears out. He's just trying to do as much rest damage as he can. But he's taking the damage for it. Tier, tier 4 tower is now going to fall. Chad Alt heals. Comes out again. He has the Agumon. So that's only a 30 second cooldown. I mean, you thought you had enough heals before. Forget it. Now it is. GG's. Once, okay, they're out. And here we go. Well played. Thanks for joining me in this qualifiers for the Ghosty League Division 2. Uh, I'm really glad you could join me here. I was really glad for the opportunity. Thanks to shout out to Angel for letting me come in here and do a little little cast for you guys. Uh, if you have any feedback, go ahead and follow us on the channel. You know, we plan on doing a lot more of these kind of shoutcasts. I normally have a co-caster with me, BDLM, but he was not here today. But expect to see him in a lot more of these so I don't run out of breath <laughs> a couple of times like I have in the past. Uh, but anyways, yeah, like I said, thanks for joining in, and uh, we'll see you in the future.